Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Crime Weekly News. I'm Derek Lavasser. And I'm Stephanie Harlow. Tonight, we're going to talk to you about a story, obviously never great, but this one has a little bit of a positive ending to it. Normally, we don't have that, so it's always good to mix it up. And the story we're talking about tonight was one that Stephanie was just filling me in about before we started this episode. And this story starts on May 28th in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Stephanie's going to give you all the details, but the overall picture here is there's a, there's a traffic stop that takes place after a police officer pulls over a vehicle for running a red light. And on the surface, it looks like it may just be this routine traffic stop. But what we have here is a, a female driver, male passenger. And at one point during the stop, the female driver mouths to the to the police officer, help me. And this leads into a whole nother set of circumstances that could have uh, resulted in something a lot worse if this officer hadn't stopped this vehicle initially. So Stephanie's going to give you all the details on that. It's a really fascinating story. Yeah. So it's the early morning of May 28th and North Myrtle Beach Police Department officer Kayla Wallace was 30 minutes from ending her shift and she did a routine traffic stop, pulled over a woman who ran through a red light. Officer Wallace, when she approached the car in the driver's side door, noticed that the driver, the female, appeared to be in distress and there was a male in the passenger seat. And whenever that male wasn't paying, you know, specific attention to what the female driver was doing, the female driver mouthed to Officer Wallace, help me repeatedly. So Officer Wallace, thinking quickly and thinking on her feet, separated the driver and the passenger, put the male into her squad car and returned to the main vehicle to speak with the female driver again, at which point the driver told Officer Wallace that her passenger was not somebody she knew. This was a man who had just shot another person and then and forced her to basically drive him away from the scene. And at that point, a bolo came over the radio and it was for this individual. It's 29-year-old Collins Xavier Manning Bates. He's now being held on five charges of attempted murder, kidnapping, unlawful possession of a weapon, illegal possession of firearms and ammunition, and possession of a weapon during a violent crime. So there's lots to obviously learn about this, this case. There's a happy ending. I don't know what would have happened to this female driver. If, take a guess. Yeah. If Officer Wallace, I mean, he had already shot one person. That, so exactly. I'm sure he wasn't going to, you know, just let her go, especially because she saw his face and everything. Um, not that we know what he was going to do. We're not assuming. Right. But, you know, given the statistics of what happened here, it, it was likely that something bad would have would have happened to this driver. So I think the driver clearly thought quickly, ran a red light, hoping to be noticed. And Officer Wallace, thankfully, wasn't just calling it in for the day, being like, oh, I only got 30 minutes left of my shift. Why do I need to pull someone over right now? I'm going to let them go because I, I don't want to be stuck with paperwork. I want to get out on time today. And Officer Wallace, doing her job properly, thank God, pulled this person over and was able to get her the help that she desperately needed. Yeah, no, I, I'm glad that you said what you said there too. It's it's one of those things that as a former cop, it drives me nuts because I'll be on the highway and someone will pass me, like they're going in and out of traffic at like a hundred miles an hour and they're going to kill someone. And I'm like, oh God, I wish there was a cop that was like posted on the side of the road. And then sure enough, this driver won't even notice that there's a cop right there at like, you know, one of those little areas where they kind of hide out. And as we're passing them, I'm like, yes. And then I look in the cop's car and I can see that he's either, you know, at worst on his phone, not paying attention or at best, he's like on his laptop writing a previous report, exactly. which, which can happen from time to time, but more likely than not, because I've been there. So I'll, he's probably not doing a report. He's probably, you know, calling it in for the night or whatever, and he misses it. And this person continues and it is what it is. But yes, thank you for saying that to your point. Wallace was paying attention. She was being proactive. She caught this and you never know. This can happen anywhere in the country. And, and I'm, I'm happy that the, the, the driver was smart enough to passively do something that would get the attention of law enforcement without putting herself at risk. It still could have been bad. Mm -hmm. It still could have been oh, bad yeah. because he might've said, Hey, Officer don't Wallace. stop. Or like just, you know, the, uh, the police officer pulls him over. And honestly, when they said when the male passenger wasn't paying attention, I have a hard time believing that he wasn't paying specific attention. I think he was probably more paranoid and like looking around and darting around just to see probably like, is there anyone around here who's going to see me? Because if I need to, I'm going to take out this police officer. Right. right? I think right. that's why he wasn't paying attention. I'm surprised. Why else? I'm surprised he let the officer put him in the car unless he had dumped the gun or whatever. I don't know if he had the gun on him still, but kudos to Kayla for doing what she did 
getting the officer's Excuse attention. Excuse me, sir. It's Officer Wallace. I'm I'm sorry, Officer Wallace. I apologize, Officer Wallace. I'm sure that would have bothered you. Probably <laughs> less than it bothered Stephanie, but that's a different story. Um, Put some yeah, respect no, on her name, man. Yeah, no, she did a great job, and you know, again, kudos to the to the to the driver. I should say, kudos to the driver for doing what she did to make sure that she got their attention. She did it in a discreet way. She was able to get their attention as they pulled, you know, once they were pulled over and it all worked out. I mean, obviously there's someone that was shot during this incident, so it didn't work out for everyone. But yeah, this is something where if you find yourself in a situation, number one, you want to, I don't know all the specifics of this particular incident, but at all costs, you want to avoid getting into the vehicle with your with your kidnapper if you can. Now, it may be a situation here where she was held at gunpoint, but that's a similar world where if you have an opportunity, try to flag an officer down if you can. But if not, if you get to a red light, and I talked about this on Dr. Oz a while ago, we were talking about different scenarios, and this is one of the ones that came up. If you're at an area where you can get out of the vehicle and there's not oncoming traffic or traffic behind you that could hit you, you want to stop, you want to get exit the vehicle, make sure you have your seatbelt where you can find the button to unclip it, and you want to exit the vehicle, keep your head down, and stay low. Because if they have a gun on them or something, you want to try to use the vehicle as protection. It's not going to stop a bullet more than likely, but you want to run in the direction of the engine block if you can, and then to the left. Get away from the vehicle, get to somewhere where someone can see you. You don't want to go with them willingly if you can avoid it because, as we were saying at the beginning of the show, based on this person's history, more than likely something would have happened to this driver. At minimum, he could have raped her, uh, but more than likely he would have he would have killed her to avoid another witness who could identify him. I'm glad this one worked out. It doesn't always happen this way. It's good that there was a positive ending to the story. You got some scumbag off the street. Look more into the story, learn about it, and see... You know, think about what you could do if you ever find yourself, unfortunately, in a, in a similar situation. Yeah. So it says um, there was a shooting. The shooting, the initial shooting happened on the highway. So I almost feel like she was already in her car. The shooting happened and he he hopped in and was yep. like, go, go, go. Right. And that's they, when you dip out. And that, yeah. Well, I mean, you get out of the car, you mean. Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, not slang, but yeah, you get out. But they did oh, find they did find a gun under the the seat of her Jeep. So he yeah. clearly had a gun when he got in the car, of which course. probably made her afraid to dip out, right? I wouldn't get out, turn my back to this dude and start running. I know. I know it's so hard and it's easy even easy for me to say. And th- and you may have some law enforcement experts in the comments or who disagree with me. This is my opinion on it. Take it for what it's worth. I recommend that you get out. You roll the dice and you get out. You try to do it in a way where he doesn't expect it, but let's say he has the gun. I know it's the the likelihood is not great that he's not going to, if he wants to pull the trigger, he can. But I, I feel that you're at more risk if you allow, because once you're in the car and you're going, it makes it harder for you to get out. And if he gets you to where he wants you to be, now it could be in an area where there's nobody around to even help you, even if you do get out. So I feel like the best opportunity to catch him off guard is to immediately when they get into your car, if that's the situation you're in, like a carjacking or something, yep, no problem. Please don't hurt me. You know, put this hand up like you're, you know, try to distract him with this hand. Use this hand to reach for your seatbelt, to reach for the door and, and, and make a run for it. You can go one of two ways. I would go towards the engine block. I know that sounds a little crazy because you're going to have to go around your door, but the engine block is what we use as officers if we're in a shootout, because if they do fire at you, the engine block would stop the bullet, where if you go backwards, the doors more than likely, depending on the type of gun they have, will not stop the round, and it could still go through the door and still hit you. Um, but either way- I just way, feel like for most people, honestly, I feel like for most people, the presence of a gun- is You're going to freeze. It makes you freeze, right? I, like, I get yeah, it. Yeah. I get it. It, it. I'll tell you what, even for me, I've been in that that life or, or death situation, and mm-hmm. even I, you have that moment where it's like you, you don't know what to do. Your body shuts down on you, but only thing you can do is prepare for it, think about it beforehand so that if it does happen, it's something that you've thought about in the past, and not, you're not thinking about what to do for the first time when it actually happens. Preparation is the number one thing you can do. So if you're going off me, the best chance you have at escaping is that initial moment. This story, as great as it is, the reason we're covering it is because it doesn't usually work out this way. There's so many variables that could occur during this incident. The cop doesn't see you. The cop gets up to the car and the offender shoots the cop instantly and continues off with you. And now you're really in trouble. 
or or you just get to a situation where you don't have a cop around. This person gets you off the main road and now you're at their their mercy. So, yes, positive story. Super happy about it. Not the common story that we hear. So I think it's also scary for like cops, right? Because Officer Wallace is pulling over this woman She's like, oh, I'm pulling over this woman for running a red light. And she doesn't literally not know that there's a man in the passenger seat with a gun under his seat. Like any time you're pulling over somebody as a cop. And I think that we don't put ourselves in that position enough. Right. Um, and I, I I think that we we need to be a little more a little more empathetic, even just like cops out there giving speeding tickets and stuff. They never know. It's like luck of the draw. They don't know what they're going to find or what kind of passenger or driver they're going to get every time they pull a car over. And they're, they're, they have to approach each car like kind of expecting the worst, like hoping for the best but expecting the worst. And that's a scary thing. Like you're just going to work every day. And as a cop, you could just get for, for no reason. You just think you're pulling somebody over and then you've got a bullet in you for out, of the, out of the blue and you didn't even expect it. Like that is, that is very scary to me. It's a, it's I'm glad you're bringing it up. It, it definitely is something that officers have to deal with every day. And I do think a lot of people don't take that in consideration. Yes. When we stop a vehicle, unless it's a previous incident that we're aware of, we're basically a moving target. We're stopping people and all the leverage is in the control of the driver. Now, 99.9% of the time, the person is just someone who committed a traffic violation. But like you just said, we as the officers do not know that. I had a lot of situations where one thing that I always did, every, every officer has their own practices, right? So for me, when I would stop a car, as I approached the car, and this was something we were trained to do, I would always have my gun, uh, my hand resting on my firearm. That would now, they I always do, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't pull my it firearm out. It freaks me out, by the way. I'm like, <laughs> and Understandably so. As yeah. a civilian, understandably so. But I would have my, my hand on my firearm because as you're approaching the car, that's when you're at your highest state of ro- vulnerability where of they're prepping for it. The reaction time for me to see what you have and then pull my firearm 99% of the time, you're going to get me before I get you. They've got the and element of surprise. Yeah. Element of surprise for sure. So let's say we get past that point and I can see in the vehicle, I can see it's only one driver. I can see their hands. Normally what I would say, if I don't feel like I need to escalate it, I would always say, Hey, just do me a favor. Uh, even when I go back to the car, just keep your hands where I can see it, whether that's on the door or on the steering wheel or on the dash, whatever you want to do, just keep your hands where I can see them. Cause the number one thing that we're taught is if you can see their hands, they can't hurt you. Hmm. When their hands start dipping under their seats and, you know, in their glove boxes, that's when they come out. You see the videos, don't take my word for it, where the hand comes out from a glove box where they're supposedly getting a registration and they're firing two rounds into the officer's chest. So as a, as a, as a caution for me, hey, listen, just keep your hands where I can see them. We'll be done a couple minutes. Uh, and they, and, and many, many times they were fine with that, mm-hmm. but there were definitely occasions where people would be like hands where you can see them. What do you, you stopped me for a red light. You stopped me for a stop sign. What do you think I am? Some murder? You just like, never know. Sir, don't ma'am. Know. I don't know, ma'am. I don't know who you are. That's why I'm asking you to do it as a courtesy. If you, you know, this will be over momentarily, but please just, you know, follow my instructions and, uh, this will be over in, in a couple minutes. I've instructed, I've told you why I stopped you. Just you know, for my safety and for yours, I'd appreciate if you can keep your hands where I can see them. That's it. But but there are people who, even after you explain why you're having them do it, they're offended because you're asking them. Especially today, when we see the things that are going on in the world, this lack of trust with law enforcement, mm-hmm. um, they feel like officers. I feel like you're like being almost like fascist. Like you're like, oh, just doing it to do it because you can, yeah. right? Yep. And, yeah. and maybe who am I to say that doesn't happen in certain no, cases? It sure you know, does, but it, you know. So it's <laughs> but the unfortunate thing for the driver as well as it is for the officers is you don't know who the good cop is, the bad one is. So the best thing you, well, you can don't do, know who the good passenger, I mean, the good driver is, and who the bad driver is. Right? That's right. We just kind of have to like try to do whatever we can for We're each both other. uncomfortable here. <laughs> yeah, we have to do what we can for each other, civilian and law enforcement alike, to make sure that the other feels comfortable and safe. Like just mm-hmm. as citizens giving a shit about each other as humans. Like, I know there's yep. a crazy concept in 2023, but there it is. Mm. Life will be easier for everyone. <laughs> you know, a uh, little tip for anyone who gets stopped out there that the Pro officer tip. will will extremely appreciate if you do this. I know I always did. I work nights 99% of my career. Um, in some states, it's the law, but in other states, it's not. But one thing you can do when you get stopped, if you want to put the officer at ease, Something that you can do is immediately after being stopped, activate your dome lights, all your dome lights in the car. So if it, because you don't realize from the the officer's perspective, your car is pitch black. I can't see your hands even when you're trying to show them to me. So one thing that always put me at ease 
that made me realize this was probably going to be a good stop uh, was when I would pull someone over and immediately they'd roll down all four windows, right? Especially if they had tint or something and they would activate their dome light, but in the way where it activates all the lights, you know, if some like SUVs have backlights. So before I even approach the car, I can see how many people are inside, everyone, where everyone's positioned. And now as I'm working, walking up to the car, I'm still not completely relaxed, but I'm automatically a little bit more at ease knowing that this person just wants to cooperate in any way they can so that they're safe and that I'm safe. So a little something, if you remember it at night, as a courtesy, if you want to, you know, maybe help the situation for you and the officer, just activate your dome light, let them, because now they can see inside the car, they can see what's on your lap, all that good stuff. And I know for me, it, you know, personally, it always, I always appreciated it. Yo, you know what pissed me off as a cop pulling someone over? When mm. you when you say like, oh, do you know I pulled you over tonight? And the person's like, I have no idea. Like that would piss that would piss me off so bad because it's like you know what you were doing. You know you were speeding, man. Like, can I can I be on. fair? Can I be honest? No. I hear you, but I understand why they wouldn't too because it's. No, at, I understand why they wouldn't. I mean? I'm just like, saying it, it would be like annoying to me. I'd be like, uh, yeah. come on, man. Normally, what I would do is I didn't give them that opportunity because I I felt like some cops would do that. And and yeah, I can see the angle where they're like, yeah, you pulled me over speeding and maybe that's the reason you don't give them a ticket. I would always go up to them and say, listen, how you doing? My name's uh, Officer Lavasser. Why do you ask where they're coming from? I hate that. Like, that's super nosy to me. Why do you ask? Not necessary. Every single time without fail when I've been pulled over, where are you coming from? Why the fuck do you need to know that, man? That's super nosy. Like, yeah. It's it's, it has form. nothing to do with why I'm driving or like why I'm speeding. Like it has nothing yeah. to do with that. Yep. No, not necessary. Sometimes I feel it might be just, they might be being nosy, but it might break the ice. Hey, where are you coming from? What are you, what are you up to? It doesn't really help the conversation. doesn't help the situation. It's a negative interaction. Because so. for me, I'm over here like, what are you, my husband, my dad? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. I think you keep it, you keep it polite. You keep it straight to the point. Hey. Oh, I'm very sweet. No, I'm saying for, from the officer's perspective, you know, hey, I'm Officer Lavasa. reason I stopped you tonight, you were going, you know, 35 into 25. Uh, I'm just going to need your license, registration, proof of insurance, uh, you know, be on your way. And if the, now at that point, if they engage with you and they say, just so you know, yeah, I know I was speeding. I apologize. I was trying to get home. My kid, you know, has a, you know, had practice tonight. I was trying to get home to get them and ready for it to go. Now at that point, the officer can use a discretion. Hey, listen, they admitted to it. They didn't have to. I've had most of the time at that point where they hand me their license, registration, proof of insurance. I'll look at it, visually look, make sure it's good. Maybe run the license just to make sure they don't have any warrants. Yeah, which and I think is a responsible thing to do as a cop, and, by the way. And by, and after that, honestly, most of the time I didn't go back to my cruiser. It's like, okay, I ran it, had a little bit of a small chat with them, maybe talk about what sport they're playing, recital, whatever it is. Yeah, they're negative. They got The license is active, no warrants, cars registered, everything's good. Hey, you know what, Joe? Or hey, you know what, Sam? You're all set. Have this a good isn't, night. This isn't Verbal like a warning. regular thing for you and- yeah, yeah, verbal warning. I don't see a ton of, you know, you're not, I don't see 17 speeding tickets on here. You're all set. Have a good night. Dude, That's I ever it. tell you the story of once I was speeding, like pretty bad actually, and I didn't notice. And I got pulled over and the cop was like, do you know why I pulled you over? And I was like, I know I was, I know I was speeding. Cause as soon as I saw the lights, I looked at my speedometer and I was like, shit. Yep. I said, I know I was speeding. And I said, but I was listening to Lincoln Park. And he's like, I understand. And I was like, you know, it got to me, man. I was like, breaking the habit tonight. And I like my foot's on the gas pedal. And he's like, I get it. I mean, like Lincoln Park is good, like speeding music. And I was like, I know, man. So <laughs> you get out of the ticket. Yeah, they can be cool. Like, I, cause I don't have a history of speeding. Like you said, it's not like I got speeding tickets left and right. I'm usually right. very good. Yeah. No. So overall, I mean, I know there's gonna be a lot of comments on this, which which are great, by the way. I, I we we always say it, but it's easier said than done because we're so busy with everything else we have going on. But it'd be great to do like a live Q and A where we can answer some questions like this because I do think a lot of people who who are not yeah, interacting with police normally may see videos and automatically think, oh, this is I don't want to get stopped. It's going to be a bad interaction for me. I think there are questions we can answer about it, and there's no template. There's no, because everyone's a human being, right? The driver Mm -hmm. and the police officer. I can't Mm -hmm. guarantee you that even though you're respectful to the police officer, even though that you turn on the dome light, he or she's not going to be an asshole. Yeah. You know, I wish I could, but that's just the way it is. And, and so all you can do is- It's like you can't guarantee that if you go out to eat and you're completely respectful to the server and like they couldn't be having a bad day and treat you like garbage, That's right. you know, like you can't guarantee that anybody's going to treat you with respect, any human. Nope. All you can do is control your own behavior, put your best foot forward. And you know what? If the officer, by the way, because I've had it happen too, right? Where you get pulled over and you got 
officer so-and-so who's just in a bad mood. And no matter what you say, he's going to be an asshole. And I've had it where I'm like, hey, officer, how you doing? You know, license register. They don't, they don't want to engage in anything. Yeah, they they're just not wanna... trying to have a convo. And, and at that point, you do the same. License registration, proof insurance. Here you go. Don't ask. Why'd you, you stop me? Whatever. you could just be like, you're all right, buddy. You having a bad see, day? See, even for me, it's just license registration. If they are, if they're one wording me, I'm one wording. Here you go. Now, more than likely, it's going to result in the ticket. Do you oh, well, need a hug? pay the ticket. Move on. <laughs> be on your way. If that's because that person, you're not going to win them over anyways. And if you try to justify it, they're probably just going to be oh, even yeah. more of an asshole. So just give them what you need to give them. If you were, if you committed the infraction, then you decide how you want to, you know, pursue, pr- pr- uh, proceed with that. Um, if you didn't, even though they're writing you the ticket. That doesn't mean you're guilty of it. You can contest it in court. You're not going to solve anything during the traffic stop. If they believe you were speeding, you weren't. Note it. Note how you document everything. They're going to give you the ticket. It's going to have mm-hmm. the information and contest it. Don't get into a battle with them there. It's not worth it. Right, wrong, or indifferent, it's not going to change the situation. Get back. You know, Stay in your car. Get your license back. Get your registration back. Have a good night. Yeah. Be on your way. Yeah. Be on your way. It ain't worth it. That's that's really, I know we kind of changed directions there, but it is an important conversation to have, but to kind of bring it back to where we were again, this isn't happening every single day, but it it, preparing for is not a bad thing because it could happen to you or me or anybody. So having a little bit of a mental game plan and asking yourself, what if is always a good thing because maybe that split second that you spent thinking about it now may save your life then. So have a game plan. You know, maybe you won't do exactly what you say. Maybe you will. Maybe it'll be an, a variation of that. But my opinion, and you can ask the opinions of others, would be if someone's getting in your car and they're not supposed to be, you're getting out. Simple as that. Any way you have to do, you get out. If they're going to shoot you, they're going to have to shoot you in the back. And you just hope that they don't have the time to do it. You're able to, they're, they're more concerned about getting out of there and they just hop over the driver's seat and take your car. It's not a guarantee they're not going to shoot, but hopefully if you stay low and stay behind something as you're fleeing the area, whatever, you know, there's, there's concealment and there's cover, right? Cover is something that will actually protect you. Concealment is something that blocks their view of you, but won't necessarily protect you. It could still come through that like a bush. So doors, depending on how they're made, could be a form of concealment, but either way, it's harder to hit what you can't see. So if you stay low below the car line, run as fast as you can. Do the whole zigzag thing as you're pulling away, making sure there's no oncoming traffic. I think there's a higher likelihood you're going to get out of that situation without being injured or killed. I'm just glad that the officer pulled her over, right? Because 30 minutes away from the end of her shift, she could have just let it ride. That's right. It was early in the morning. She could have been just like, oh, she's on her way to work or she's tired, whatever. I don't want to deal with the paperwork. She could have let it ride and anything could happen. But this is a a police officer that did her job and like clearly values the, you know, the work that she puts out. And that's great. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Officer Wallace. Yes. And uh, shout out to the driver as well for putting putting Wallace in that situation where she could do her job. So good all the way around. Bad guy got caught. We're happy that this story tonight was a little bit more of a positive note. Uh, Any final words from you before we record this week's episode of Crime Weekly? No. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Follow us on social media, right? That's right. Twitter and Instagram. That's right. Crime Weekly pod. I don't think I said it actually on here. Shout out to everybody who's following us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I just put up a post about it. We just passed 50,000 followers on Instagram. Pretty cool. Um, It happened fast considering we don't post a ton. I usually just post the, the the new episodes being launched, but we appreciate all the love and support. Everyone's great on there, and it's always great to see your comments, and we're very fortunate. We're very fortunate that we have you guys who, who allow us to do what we love, and it's uh, we don't take it for granted, which is why we always put so much effort into these episodes. We hope you get as much out of it as we put into it. That's what the goal is, and we're going to keep doing it as long as you will have us. So as Stephanie said, be safe out there. We'll see you next week. Bye.